Lieutenant right. Governor Garland Gilchrist. So excited that you could be with us this morning. Let's jump right into it if you're ready. Thank you for having me. Yes, of course. Well, it's no surprise. This is a really divisive time right now. Is there a plan to bring Michiganders together with the governor's state of the state address tonight? I'm very excited about the state of the state. You know, the, the theme is why we believe in Michigan. And I think that is what unites us, something that, you know, I'm, I'm a Michigander who's lived in other parts of the country and, and the pride that the people of Michigan feel for being from here uh, is, is unmatched among states. Uh, everybody, everybody is just so, so just, um, it's so deep. And I think you're going to hear a lot about that. And we, we did an art program where we asked people to talk about why they believe in Michigan. It's in artwork. We have young people submit these amazing and inspiring pieces. So that's going to be something woven throughout the speech. But another way we're going to bring people together is the fact that there's going to be something for everyone that we talk about in the state of the state address, whether it's the, the huge work that we've done on expanding the economy and creating jobs, like real good paying union jobs for people. So that we're super excited about just yesterday, we had this huge announcement, the biggest investment that General Motors has ever made in its history um, to build electrified uh, vehicles and to build batteries uh, here and manufacture them in the state of Michigan is super exciting. We're also going to have something for people who have worked hard their whole careers and have retired. You know, 10 plus years ago, uh, their retirement started getting taxed in a way that was a broken promise um, to them who had worked so hard. And so we're going to propose repeal of that retirement tax, which is a big deal to people who are already retired or are coming up near retirement. We're also going to um, put more money in people's pockets through a working family tax credit. That's going to increase and deliver an average tax refund of almost almost $3,000 to almost 750,000 people across the state of Michigan. And it's gonna pull more than 20,000 people out of working poverty, which is super exciting. We also are gonna lower the cost of insulin because a lot of people in Michigan have diabetes. A lot of people in my family have diabetes and insulin is super expensive. So we're looking to you know, cap the cost of insulin at $50 a month. And we're also going to uh, enable um, people to have better access to more robust mental health care services. We all have been through so much during this pandemic, so much stress, so much strain, people of every age and every community. And so we're gonna make that uh, as available as physical health care is. Absolutely, and of course, that's really what's going to be on the minds of everyone watching tonight is the state of the pandemic here in Michigan. You know, how will your office compare things when we talk about the state of the state address last year compared to Michigan's status this year for the address, is that a good thing for your office or a bad thing where we stand now compared to last year? Well, certainly when, when the governor gave the state of the state in 2021, uh, vaccines had just become available and they were not yet accessible to every Michigander. And now they are. And that's the biggest difference between this point in the pandemic and one year ago or the beginning of the pandemic. We had no access to vaccines because the uh, doctors and scientists were working on developing, testing and finalizing them. And so now that we do, we're continuing to ramp up and be aggressive and asking people to make the choice to get vaccinated. And when they do, it saves lives. It keeps people out of the hospital. I can speak from this personally, having just recovered my family and household from us uh, testing positive for COVID-19. Our cases were mild because my wife and I are vaccinated and boosted. My 28 year olds are vaccinated and it's really important and it helps you be able to stay at home, be with your family and not be in the hospital or be on a ventilator. We also are surging testing capacity. There's going to be 300,000 additional tests above our normal capacity surge to schools so that children can learn in person and not remotely and do so safely and have the education professionals who serve our communities have the peace of mind to be able to do that safely and it's going to make a big difference as we move forward and manage this virus to move through this pandemic. Awesome. Well, you know, you've mentioned a lot already just in terms of progress amid the pandemic and a lot of goals that the governor's office has moving forward. But of course, on top of the pandemic, on top of trying to achieve these goals, it's an election year. So how is that going to help or get in the way of achieving some of those goals? Well, Governor Whitmer and I are, have been focused since day one on putting Michiganders first, and that's the, the thread that weaves through everything that we do. We're working and fighting hard for people, for Michigan families to make sure they have what they need to be positioned to be successful and to be their best selves, and they really uh, dream big here in the state of Michigan. And so that's certainly going to continue to be true with everything we deliver this year. We believe that the, the track record and the trust that we built with the people of Michigan is going to uh, encourage more people to vote in this election than ever before, even in the face 
of uh, our Republican legislature trying to uh, enact laws that may make it more difficult for some people to vote. But I think that record voter turnout is going to lead to us uh, being able to have the honor and privilege of serving the people of Michigan for another four years. All right. Now to some of the maybe tougher questions, some of the, the criticism that your office has faced, uh, you know, even just with something as simple as mass mandate or no mass mandate, you really can't win. You'll have people upset if the mass mandate is put in place. And then you have people upset when there isn't one put in place. So how does the office determine what's the right decision? What we know now is how we can slow the spread of this virus is by people being careful, by people being mindful and making uh, choices that are responsible for their community, not just for them individually. That starts with people making the choice to get vaccinated and people to get boosted if they are uh, eligible and old enough to get boosted. We also have strongly recommended uh, that people wear masks while they are indoors and while they're uh, in groups of people. And we're modeling that behavior and we're seeing um, you know, people, we're seeing businesses, we're seeing communities, we're seeing school districts uh, step up and make that choice uh, for people to be safe and they have the power to do that. We've, we've made sure they have the power to do that and to have that be protected from the legislature that's tried to take it away from local officials. And so uh, we hope that people continue to make that choice and doing so will help keep our community safe. All right, some, some other criticisms. I mean, we're, we're learning that the Michigan GOP is saying that they're putting out some of their earliest ads against Governor Whitmer ahead of the election. Some of the criticisms that they're bringing up, COVID-19 related nursing home deaths, the ongoing water crisis in the state, as well as inflation. Um, do you know how the office is, is planning to respond to some of those criticisms? Those are three things that the Michigan Republican Party has said nothing about and has no plan for. They've never had a plan to respond to the pandemic. They've never had a plan to finance water projects. They've never had a plan to, to frankly, just increase quality of life here in the state of Michigan. What is true is what our administration has done on all these issues. When it's come to the pandemic, we have managed this pandemic in a way that's tried to keep, manage this virus, frankly, to help us all get through this safely and effectively. Um, we have the overwhelming majority of our seniors vaccinated, especially those who are living in nursing homes and long-term care facilities. Uh, there was a report that was released recently that confirmed that we counted uh, those people who passed away in those nursing homes uh, accurately according to the CDC guidance. And so we're, we're proud of that and we've been transparent. We're gonna continue to be transparent and accountable on what's happened. When it's come to water, we have already started with record progress in terms of replacing lead service lines in the city of Benton Harbor, and we're continuing to do so in Flint and make sure we have access to clean, safe drinking water. It's been a a core tenant of our administration since we began, and it's going to always continue to do so. And everything that I mentioned in what we're going to hear about in the state of the state tonight is about making things less expensive and putting more money in Michiganders' pockets. So we're going to continue to do that. Any efforts to really target children and minorities when it comes to the vaccine, some areas where we're still lacking? Absolutely. So, you know, as you know, I chair the Michigan Coronavirus Task Force on Racial Disparities, and uh, we've been spending um, a lot of time and resources and creativity to make sure that we can uh, have good information available in the community where there's been a lot of uh, inaccurate information and lies being told about the about the vaccines and what's available. And so we're working out every day to make sure people continue to make that choice. A program that we're rolling, rolling out with Detroit Public Schools um, that's going to enable more access to testing and vaccination for, for school-aged children is super important. And, and that's going to help us increase uh, youth vaccinations in the city. And typically, uh, when one person gets vaccinated in a household, everybody gets vaccinated in the household. So we want to go uh, make sure that the young people, as well as our elders um, and, and parents, have the opportunity to do that. Awesome. All right. Um, another issue, something that we have been covering closely here at 13 on your side, and that's the issue of some people being told they've got to pay back a lot of money they've received in unemployment benefits. What is the governor's plan in addressing those concerns? Some people being put in a really unimaginable situation with that. You know, we've announced a task force to be able to address some of the challenges that we saw with the unemployment insurance program. And, and we know that it's hard. And this program was stretched in the way that it was has never been before. And frankly, was never designed to be because we had a, a, a once in a generation um, crisis that we had to respond to. And we were focused on getting money into people's pockets and trying to do so. And, and we know that some people 
um, you know, defrauded the system and all this kind of thing. But a lot of people, uh, most people, the overall majority of people, you know, had legitimate claims. And so we work to serve them. And so we were work, we're asking people to continue to work with the department to make sure we get everything clarified and, and, and that um, people have the money they should have. All right. One of my last questions, Lieutenant Governor, you know, especially speaking of funding, money, the Free Press just reporting this month that Michigan is seeing billions of dollars in surplus. So is that something that Michiganders can look forward to in, in terms of relief, uh, possibly any more refunds like we saw with the insurance refunds? Is that something that Michiganders can look forward to in hearing about those billions of dollars in surplus? Well, I just mentioned a number of ways that we're going to be able to get money into people's pockets through things like the Working Families Tax Credit. We also are going to be proposing in the speech an electric vehicle tax rebate for people who are purchasing new electric vehicles, like those ones that can be rolling off them GM assembly lines that we just announced yesterday. $2,500 rebate at the state level. And when you combine that with the federal rebate of $7,500, that's going to make those electrified trucks $10,000. Uh, more affordable. And so we're really excited about that. So we're, we are, we're putting in place a number of ways to put money in people's pockets. All right. Lieutenant Governor, anything that I'm leaving out or just an overall message that, you know, your office, the governor is hoping that people will take from tonight's address? Yeah, I think um, I think you covered it all. We just, again, the speech is about why we believe in Michigan, why we're proud to be Michiganders. And I think there will be something for everyone in this speech.